You're, good evening. You're tuned in to the Vintage House Show, normally broadcast on WNUR FM 89.3 in HD1. But of course, there's nothing normal about now. And so we're broadcasting to you from our homes. It is the at home edition of the Vintage House Show, and the Vintage House crew is in the building. We are uh, minus one at the moment, but my name is DJ Mega, also known as Kevin McFall, and joining me from the Vintage House crew, our co-founder and super duper producer herself, Lauren Lowry. And of course, it wouldn't be the Vintage House show without a special, special guest. And indeed, tonight is a special uh, guest. We have with us in our virtual studio, Tyree Cooper, the original Super Duper producer. Word, word, word. Peace, 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 peace. peace. How peace, are you, sir? I'm good, man. I'm good, you know. Trying to do what it do to make it do what it does. Very good. I'm liking that, <laughs> that T-shirt as well. We, oh, word, word. We gotta this get the, you one. This the this the new this the new line I just started with my cousin. Um, wow. uh Yeah, uh, it's uh, based on my um, my catalog of, of records that I produce. I have some pretty crazy titles and some titles that uh, that are pretty known too. So this is this is. What one, what is this? I see the first two lines. House music is my life four lines yes gotta gotta cop one of those and in exchange we're going to provide you with a vintage house shield t-shirt okay <laughs> we'll make okay, that word. connect word 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 Appreciate where did we that. find Appreciate it where that. did we order that shirt uh at recoup what is it recoup at icloud.com the website is not really up right now uh it's still getting worked on at the at the present so we we understand yeah yeah you know you know this is this is this is like this is the equivalent to you know if i had a little chevy and you know what i'm saying i'm out the back of my trunk right now you know until <laughs> until i get my little spot jumping off you know how it goes you know what what you before, the, before the storefront before the storefront started jumping off you know you know that so is what is up man everyone who's tuning in from youtube to facebook Word. Where? We are here with Tyree Cooper, and you are tuned in to the Vintage House Show, which is the premier on-air radio show and podcast dedicated to illuminating and preserving the lives, the music, the careers, and the history of house music pioneers, such as the one we have here with us tonight, Tyree Cooper. Yeah, peace, we're, peace. We're powered by the Modern Dance Music Research and Archiving Foundation, which is the only repository in the United States mm. dedicated solely to the study, preservation, and celebration of the genres of house and dance music. Mm. Our mission yeah. is to preserve the memories and the memorabilia that support the sustainability of this culture, the one we call house. Right on. Tonight's guest, we're so honored to have him with us uh, as he is truly a pioneer. And I would go as far as saying he is legendary in his impact in uh, house music. I, would it be fair to say that you are one of the uh, trailblazers of hip house? Uh, yes, that would be a fair assessment. Yes. Can you, can you talk to us about how hip house came to be in your role in uh creating this subgenre well um okay uh um uh, i think it was about 19 19 around 1988 um don't know if the story is true but you know i'm just gonna give you my version please um your story um, is the story tonight um uh uh Fast Daddy didn't want to do any uh, house records anymore. He wanted to do some hip hop records. So uh, the record label DJ International uh, was only selling house. So I, I figured, I guess Fast Daddy figured out a way to combine the two. And so once Yo Yo Get Funky came out, um, the record label asked me because prior to that, uh, I don't know if anybody know what a studio rat is. 
uh, and that's just that's a bad terminology for a person that just lives in the studio. They call it now they they call it uh, I'm in the lab. You know, back in the day, it was called being a studio rat, and um, uh, I was a I was a studio rat along with uh, shout out to Joe Smooth. I know him is out there saying peace out to my brother uh, Pete Black. He's no longer with us, but uh, we were like studio rats for DJ International, right? So when Fast Eddie did Yo Yo Get Funky, uh, the record label asked me to create something like that. I kind of told him no in the beginning because I felt as though that was a Fast Eddie thing. Yeah, you know, I was. I'm I'm from the South Side, South Side. So I was kind of like you know you know we, you know we 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 off into the deep melodic kind of things you know vocally kind of things. So uh, you know it just wasn't my thing. So he asked me a couple of times and then I said, okay, I had to find a rapper. And um, I called Liddell, who had recently uh, did a track with Cool Rock called uh, I'll Make You Dance, right? And um, and I, I had met Cool Rock prior to, I just didn't have his telephone number because Cool Rock and I was in a DJ battle up at uh, Centrum, Centrum Hall. Shout out to Harv Roman, shout out to Tony Badea. Uh, shout out to Tony Estrada, Cesar Echeverria, and stuff like you know. We was all in the DJ battle. Uh, no, I did not win. No, Cool Rock did not win either. <laughs> <Wow>. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I think uh, Tony Estrada won that battle, or Cesar Echeverria. Maybe Cesar Echeverria. I'm not for sure. But anyway, that was around 1985 at that time, right? So, um, and me and Cool Rock's concern was who was better than who, you know long as I was better than him or he was better than me. That's well, I was that was our whole concern. So when Liddell gave me his um his telephone number, uh I kinda I called him up and I said, Yo, I'm working on this track. You know, would you be interested in rapping on it? He said, Yeah, yo, you know, that's cool, it's cool. So, you know, after that he came down to the studio and um he laced turned up the bass. Need I say more. And I thought it was <laughs> I thought I thought I thought it was too deep. I thought it was too deep for uh, a commercial audience, right? And and the record label, the, the guy was Benji Espinoza. Uh, shout out to Benji Espinoza. He uh, he said, Tyree, this will probably be your biggest record uh, that you ever have. I'm like, man, it's too deep. They're not going. They got pianos in it and stuff, man. They ain't nobody gonna be. He got some acid all up in it, man. He got rap all over it. They, they got all of it. Man, ain't nobody gonna be playing this. Eight, eight weeks later, after the release of the record, maybe, maybe eight, maybe, maybe ten weeks later, um, I was getting ready to go to Europe. That's how fast it was. Wow. What year was that? Was that your first trip to Europe, or? Yeah, that was my very first trip to Europe. My very first, my very first trip. I was supposed to go up a year before that, but. Man, we ain't gonna talk about that, but uh, so uh, this was 88, 89, it was 1988, it was totally 88, and um, and like, like, like I think the record came out like September of 88, by November of 88, I was in Europe, uh, peace, Walter, peace, peace, uh, mm -hmm. by um, by December of 88, the record was the, was the top eight record. In the pop charts, and I went over there to pop the top of the pops. What, what's the peace, peace, queen, peace, 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 me, me. Uh, mm -hmm. I went over there to do uh, top of the pops, which like was the equivalent to like um, American bandstand in that yeah. respect, in that regard, right? So if you if you was on top of the pops, uh, you kind of I have arrived, you know, kind of <laughs> thing, you know, what I'm saying. And the record was number eight in the pop chart at the time. It went from from. From, it was like one of the fastest records. Like I, I, I imagine, like from thirty to fifteen to eight in like in a two and a half week span. Wow, yeah. that's that's life changing right there, huh? We, we uh, got a little Jim yes. Uncle Dave playing uh, as our music bed right now as you tell that story right. of how you took over the charts and what was becoming a famous musician, artist, rock star. What was that like for someone from the south side of Chicago? Okay, okay, okay. Vision this. Uh, uh, you see, you, you, you see some, not all, 
how some of these young rappers behave. Bring back 30 years and you imagine that's hip house. Okay. Right. I mean, we were, we were, it, it was like, it was like, it was like, okay. I, I mean, this is, a, I was going to make a bad analogy, but uh, peace, Reginald. I was going to make a bad analogy, uh, but it was like being in something that was so small, but it was so humongous all over the world because uh, um, the way it, it was perceived it was perceived a threat in America to hip hop. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's a whole nother you did. Uh, peace, Chauncey. <laughs> peace, Chauncey. Peace, 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 Chauncey. I'm I know that super I, I know, I've known him so long. Anyway, uh, 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 it was it was kind of a threat to the to the um, to the uh, to New York hip hop because they really wasn't understanding. Although, like DJ DJ Marley Mar, DJ Mr. C. I don't know if y'all, you know, I don't know how deep y'all digging y'all craze, but uh, uh, DJ Mr. Deep, we go deep, we go deep. DJ <laughs> Mr. C put a, a house track on a Big Daddy Kane record, on a Big Daddy Kane album called This is the House that Mr. C Built. Uh, uh, Craig G on his first album did a, a hip house song called uh, Turn This House Into a Home. And Craig G is just, I mean, I don't know if you know about it. Craig G is just sick when it comes to freestyle. I mean, he's just, you know, he's like, yo, he he co-wrote him, you know, Eight Mile. That's how deep it is, you know. Marley Mar, um, he he loves house music. Uh, uh, one time, uh, this is, I mean, hip, hip house is when I say deep, it's deep. I'm just giving you the American side. I haven't went to Europe yet, you know. Uh, uh, one time we was at a music seminar in 1992, and a friend of mine, shout out to my man DJ Jess. We walking along the beach, just you know, we wasn't beach combers. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, we just walking along the beach at the winter, uh, the winter music conference, right? And we ran into um, we ran into um, Lords of the Underground, and we were like, and this is when like, like, like uh, Chief Rocker, Psycho, all the all their first album, that first little album was all the tracks was a hit. And so we walked in, we walked in, ran it to him. was like, oh, yo, man, you know, like, what's up, man? Man, y'all, you know, crazy, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he was like, yeah, it's cool, man. He's like, yo, can we take a picture? And he's like, yeah, yeah. He said, what's your name, man? And then Jess said, DJ Jess, man, or Jess, you know. He said, what's your name, Tyree? He said, wait, like, Tyree Cooper? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, dude, yo, yo, yeah, we can take this picture. <laughs> this, this is Lords of the Underground. And I say, they records was hot. I'm like, that's to me. That's just ultimate respect. And again, it, it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper with people that you have no idea. Special Ed Onyx, peace out, peace out, Little Roy. Uh, Onyx, uh, and then you got the Europeans. My man King B over in Amsterdam. Tony Scott over in Amsterdam. Uh, uh, Rebel MC in London. Uh, I mean, hip house just went. Anyway. So where where is the genre of hip house today? <laughs> what, what's going on with it? Um, it's still here, man. I mean, you know, if, if you listen to some of those, you know, um, see, you, you just, see the, the thing is, what everybody gets, what everybody get misconstrued on, is what they what they thinking a hip house record should be from back in the day as opposed to listening to these cats that's today, black eyed peas and such groups like this, when they had that four to the floor, what do you think they doing? It's hip house. It's, you know it's hip house. So, so they just not calling it hip house. Missy Elliott did one of the oh, illest, yeah. illest hip house tracks. Yes. I mean, just ill. But now it's pop. That that's almost pop right now, as opposed well, to like, a, a genre. Over, right? Exactly. Right. But it's still a genre. But they just don't call it that because mm -hmm. the association <clears throat> to the, the association to the urban youth. And I said it like uh, my man and my cousin Vinny. You know, the two youths. Uh, you know, it's the, <laughs> it's the it's the youths. You know, it's too <laughs> urban. It's, it's too urban for them, so they don't call it. They just call it dance. Right. You know what I mean? That's that's how they that's how they mask it. Exactly. That's so even, true. Even 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 what's my, what's what's the I don't even like this child. Uh, 
Lady Gaga and her um, little documentary when she did Poker Face, the guy was saying, we gonna mix a little uh, this, some techno, some house, some, you know, hip house, we gonna mix it all in. You know what I'm saying? So it, it just don't call it that. They just steal it. Like, it's mine now. Okay. What's these cats? These uh, Barry Gordy's Barry Gordy's grandsons was running them up here back in the early 2000s. Uh, LMAFO or whatever they were called. Mm -hmm. That was all hip house. Yes. Black Eyed Peas got Grammys on some hip house. So as you were saying about hip house, where did he go? Yeah. Oh, pop. Well, this is, we've got, you know, a lot of people tuned in and this is an important education for them to have an understanding. And so it's coming from someone who was there and a collaborator with many of the other pioneers of the genre. I mean, this is part and partial to why we do this show, right? Is to hear the stories, document it so that individuals studying the genre, those looking to create the future of the genre have a baseline, a starting point. And so who were some of those other people that you collaborated with on, on Wax, which at the time was, was the medium of choice. Now it's all digital, but um, some of your most revered collaborators. Okay, you know, um, you know, uh, <laughs> don't laugh because they can't hear me, and I can say it. Uh, I, I, I'm, a, um, I was one of the, sh I believe it's like in the Jackson Five. <laughs> uh, I was one of the, uh, I was one of the believers in the Jackson Five. So the first, per first people I, I started working with was my sisters. Well, who, who, I couldn't hire no singer. I couldn't afford Daryl Pandy. I couldn't have Robert Owens or, you know, none of the other, you know, I couldn't afford none of them cats to sing on one of my songs. I'd have loved it, but I I went to my sister because she kind of, you know. Go ahead and name drop. Yeah, what's your uh, sister's name? My sister name is uh, Chick. Uh, uh, um, you know, you can follow at Chicky D at uh, Instagram. Okay. Chicky D, Chicky D. Nine or something like that. Oh, please don't kill me. So, so when I asked when I asked my uh, sister to uh, sing a song for me, she said yes. Yeah. So um, that was the beginning. Yes, I feel the night peace. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that that was that was like the beginning for me. And so, uh, her, my other sister. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dorothy Cooper. Yes, that's her name. I don't want to give a government name. Thank you, DJ. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, uh, you know, I asked my other sister, uh, Miyoshi Morris, uh, to sing a song for me. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Uh, uh, my other sister, Miyoshi Morris, to sing a song for me called Music. Yeah. And so pretty much after that, it was up to me to start doing vocals. So, <laughs> so <laughs> most of the people, most of the people I worked with was like my my two sisters, um, Cool Rock Steady, uh, my friend MCD, uh, who goes by Uncle Hood. Shout out to Uncle Hood, um, and um, you know, and then in Europe, my uh, my homeboy, uh, Pure God Manifested. Peace out to Sean Dennis, Pure God Manifested. Um, you know. Not, not so many, just, I did most of the rapping myself. You know what I mean? I, I kind of learned that skill on my own, so. And I, I didn't, a singer, yeah. Could, could, yeah. You, could you describe for us, you know, what are some of the core elements of a hip house record? A funky ass beat, no. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Uh, 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 well, you know, it, it, it what do you mean, like modern day or just in like from back in the day? Because I mean, you know, it kind of, it, it kind of varies. First of all, you got to have the track, so it, it, the track has to be uh, bumping and 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 resemblance to a bumping hip hop track, yeah. Take us through it, uh, it, it has to be, it really has to be bumping, um. Depending on depending on what 
you know, what what you have in mind. You, you know, you might be, you know, you might be on the James Brown field. You know, you might be, you know, feeling some JBs or you might be feeling some Macy or, or you might be feeling some disco, but you might, you know what I mean, chop it up. But the drums up under it has to be, you know, really, really cool. And the, the loop or the sample just got to be hot or uh, the, the, the overall production got to be hot because Mr. Lee was doing it and he really didn't sample too much, you know what I mean? So uh, it's not necessarily about sampling, but the track had to be hot. Um, his bass lines was just banging, Doug Lazy. His stuff was 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 just banging. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, so it, it was more about the, the the elements that went into it, and it had to have a lot of a lot of uh, hip hop flavor to it. it. It just can be your standard. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You know, it, it couldn't be anything on 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 another guy because the rappers or the MCs was really showing their skill set but in a in a in, in house fashion you know what i mean they were they was they was targeted <clears throat> targeted for the dance floor but they were really coming up with some you know um um some some nice some nice little rhymes you know uh you know uh, i'm coming hardcore like a giant don't stop me because i'm defying any shape form or fashion get a tyree boy you get a thrasher you, you know house right. people don't really house people don't really think of it as that when they're dancing but the mc or the rapper in front of them not even not even make the connection that's why we used to do so many shows back in the day because they can make the connection you know oh yeah oh yeah but you know you know after you know after a while uh, uh well anyway you have to have that uh element uh as well and then you know the arrangement you know nice little breakdown dj and a dj intro DJ outro because that's who you cater into majority of the time. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, that that's that's the pretty much the main ingredient. It's not most 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 big musical genres. Peace, 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 peace to the king and <laughs> one more chance. <laughs> yeah, we did that with Jesse up in London. That was a crazy session. Uh, uh, um, um, peace, peace, Jesse. Uh, you know. We might have to unpack that a little so, bit, that session, what was going on there, but keep going. Uh, <laughs> most so, definitely. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so uh, you know, most of, your, most of your big musical genres doesn't have a lot of pieces that go with it. It's not so complicated. Uh, they say simplicity or novelty works better, right? You know, so that's why so many minimal style tracks have been pop hits. And again, it's just me and my theory. I don't know. Somebody can argue with me on another day, which I love to do that. But uh, it's just, um, it's just what it is. I mean, claim, claim your authority on it. You're I mean, pick, pick, a, pick, pick, pick any, pick any pop hit, and if you break it down, it's just basic beat, baseline, voice, and yeah. nowadays with some effects. Back in the day, it was beat, simplistic baseline groove. It, wrote it and it became it. That's why disco was so popular. And pop music was so afraid of disco because it was, I, I believe it was be, it was becoming uh, very, very commercial. And they could, they could, they, they, the, 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 the real disco records uh, had substance. That's I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying like, yo, you know, I'm directing this toward this, this, this target audience. I mean, the, the real ones, you know, and that, that also was in uh, house music as well to a degree because you know Jack my body, Jack your body was a number one record in the UK. Uh, Love can't turn around was the number one record. You know what I'm saying in the UK. Uh, you know Paul Johnson was the number one record in the UK. You know what I'm saying. So uh, the thing things of this nature. Uh, that's just the ones from Chicago. Uh, it's just generally simplicity. But it has to be the right simplicity. You just can't just say, okay, I got a beat, I got a bass line, and I got this. You know, it, it still has to be arranged. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, y'all didn't. Y'all broke out the fast, steady joint. Uh, 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 yeah, it just, it, like I said, just sim most, of the time, most of the time it's, it's simple. 
it, it's not really complicated or anything. So, and so we pulled out, get you some more because it's indicative yeah. of what you're describing right now. Yeah, that's my mix for uh, fast steady. Right. I, I didn't, I, I didn't think anyone liked it. I just did it for myself because um, when I wanted to DJ the track, I wanted to uh, mix it over another beat. So when this beat dropped. Uh, this is already in, then everybody is, you know, already at a, at a, high, uh, pitch. At, at a high pitch. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, this is why we call it the Vintage House Show because we, I said we go deep, right? And we, yeah, yeah. we love this stuff and um, your early contributions and current. So fast forward us really quick and then we're mm -hmm. going to double back to uh, another sub genre which you were instrumental in the the subgenre of acid house but but catch us up on what you're doing today uh i'm out here beachcombing now uh no i'm so <laughs> <laughs> no um um uh like i said just started this t-shirt uh this t-shirt thing with my with my cousin um i'm um working on a, a few other projects not necessarily uh music <laughs> yes jesse you brought me to the desert <laughs> Ah, uh, that was nice. That was nice. Uh, I'm doing, um, you know, I'm still doing music. Uh, I was, uh, before, before, uh, tragic, uh, something happened to my Mac. I, I say tragic. Uh, I was working on a, a remix from my, uh, one of my younger brothers. He does, uh, gospel music. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's funny because I, the time I was growing up, I, I never thought any of my little brothers was paying any attention to what I'm doing. You know, it's just like, what <laughs> you know like wait, wait and they say wait what <laughs> wait, wait, wait say that again you know <laughs> um I, I was doing a remix oh peace peace dj peace and mac emac emac peace peace um uh you know i'm just uh you know just 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 keep myself busy like i said working on a few things and um just you know just trying to do you know, nobody pays attention to us when it comes to house music. When you when you when you when you turn on the TV or anything like that, you know, it's it's mostly, you know, black culture is subjugated to just uh, hip hop, and you know they you know it's, it's you know it's a little bit more vast than that because techno from Detroit, you know, kind of kicked off a whole nother you did. So you know that's all black music, but you know, so I'm just trying to do some things that um, I would like to bring light to that, so we can get some kind of notoriety, you know, well, something. Well, let's get academic about that. And I know this is in Lauren's space in particular as well. Um, the subjugation of, of black music and then the appropriation of it, it, it's all a process that that seems to be very cyclical as uh, genres of music emerge from, you know, the, the creator. So um, how have you, sort of dealt with that in your <laughs> career um okay i i'll put you like this um i, I spent a lot of <clears throat> okay like back in the day like in chicago it wasn't it it, it, it wasn't so so bad so you, as far as oh peace harry it, as far as as far as like making hip house or anything of that nature right so by the by the record company not really knowing how to promote first of all promote house music because back in the day they used to say uh they used to say um house had no face to it so you couldn't market it right you, you couldn't you couldn't sell to the masses because it didn't have any face well it always did it was a dj that was a face because we they figured it out in the 90s when they got rid of the performers that performed the tracks actually to the songs that they were making or the ones that was pop right so when they uh, uh when they when they got rid of that systematically the europeans on that on, on that side uh the americans changed the name of house music to dance music because it was too urban for communities you know uh, for whatever reason um the name of house was too urban, so they changed it to to dance music. And so CNC Music Factory, you know, have to watch, you know, tracks of this nature were becoming pop hits. But it was again, it was no different than Love Can't Turn Around, Yo Yo Get Funky, or yeah, you know, or, or, you know, right, exactly, or if anything from Fingers, right? Um, it's just they they tailor made the uh, 
the market for 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 that so they can have a, a staple in it I, I i imagine but um by that uh, happening it's built over into uh america so now your 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 your, your black station that used to really run you know your urban style music your mix shows things of this type of nature were gone um you know a clear channel or whoever was starting to buy up you know black radio stations so only the white stations were playing it. and then at that time uh the music was not really really chicago i'd say like that so uh me trying to deal with it throughout my career i, I kept my i kept my ear to the street so i started doing stuff with uh with uh with dance mania you know what i'm saying with ray barney and uh uh i, I wish i told ray barney this and i'd say it again i, I say it forever um if i didn't know ray barney was this cool dj international would have never got any of the tracks that you know today had i known he was this cool that's my big brother i, I that's my big ray barney's my big brother that's that's the dude because what he did for for uh for young black brothers is open the door where there was no door for them when i say open the door without getting into too much detail he opened the door i mean he busted down so you know you got your dj funks your jamming drills your you know shout out to drill shout out to uh corky shout out to wax master you know you got paul johnson you know he, he gave all these brothers uh opportunity and even an old head like me to get down with these young brothers so that's what i did and the right. kind of tracks the kind of tracks i was doing it wasn't necessarily like you know the your typical dance mania although it was dance mania uh it, it was very dance mania but it wasn't like um it was it didn't sound like it didn't sound like any other other records because I, I know i wanted to go to europe and uh and play in europe at the end of the day so and i wanted my music to be over there because you know <clears throat> at the time that's kind of what a bag was you know you want to be with a bag at you know what I'm saying so you know no uh, doubt uh so i kind of i kind of did that um and for a brief moment um personal things happened and so uh i, I kind of got out of chicago and moved to detroit and stayed uh in the same building with uh submerge and uh juan atkins and eddie folks and you know uh these, these brothers up there they they you know, accepting with open arms and stuff. So shout wow. out to them brothers. Wow. Uh, so you know, I kept because you know at the time, um, from just for me, uh, Chicago was a bit weird. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. It wasn't really like. It wasn't. It wasn't no. It wasn't like. No, it, it wasn't no togetherness. I, I just say it like that. It wasn't no togetherness for me. And um, so um, I had to uh, figure out other other means. Now, you know, I, I, I've asked a few people to do remixes. They told me no. I ain't gonna say no names, but uh, you know, so I had to do. I had to. I had to figure out to do things on my own. So you know, even while doing dance mania stuff uh, for a little while, I, I delivered pizza and things of that nature. You know, brother ain't afraid to get a job when he has to. You know, <laughs> I had. A, I had. A, uh, I still had a, a daughter to feed. Uh, uh, super shout out to my daughter who needed a beauty uh price and stuff you know uh i had a daughter to feed so and try to take care of so i, I did whatever it took um um so once i once i kind of figured out my game plan i didn't do no more pizza i stuck with dance many and i figured out the way to get to europe so make a long story even shorter that's just the beginning and so by going to europe you know hanging out in europe i'm trying to see what the game is like so you know i hung out i hung out uh yeah peace to Ben man paris mitchell yeah victor victor romeo was a good instrumental part of my in my production like uh anyway so i went to europe to see what this game is like you know to see what's you know what's the goings on and the goings on you know why how, how, how come you know these people is doing it and and these people aren't you know so you know i, I kind of figured out my little way and um did a few records that's um uh, that's like um uh, i don't know if y'all know speed garage but i got like a a couple speed garage classics yeah. you know uh uh that's that's flowing out there uh, I, I, uh I didn't do no dubstep uh i came yeah. close to doing two-step though because I, I like to i like two-step that 
two step gave me energy like house music did. Yeah. Uh, uh but uh I did some speed <clears throat> some speed garage uh speed garage tracks. Uh shout out to my man Carl Brown, shout out to my man Matt Jam Lamont, shout out to the uh to to you know to the whole little crew because they gave me much love, you know, back in the in the nineties and stuff. So for the for those tuned in, can you um just elaborate a little bit on speed garage versus house music or Chicago house? <laughs> okay, 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 oh okay, okay, okay. Uh my my interpretation of speed garage um from watching it being produced um is basically a very tight house track where 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 we might be lazy on an open spank I mean it's, it's might be uh the, the snares may be a bit more choppier uh the uh the rhythms is more uh Caribbean based you know because of the because of the brothers that's that's over there um and so it's it's really house based that the, 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 the one of the keys to speed garage is the pitch control yeah because they don't play nothing at zero they make a 123 track but they play it at 155 million bpm <laughs> uh so it, it literally is sped up it really sped up so but but it but see again like house music it goes along with their dances so they have little dances that they that they do with it because they have another they have a little culture uh very very resembles to black culture in america right because they kind of like 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 a speed garage party looks like a uh like a hip-hop party because their hip-hop parties is totally different to speed garage parties you know so uh they, they their speed garage parties is very very uh they, they're dressed you know women with dress with, with skirts and everything you know what i'm saying um they, they forever toasting, you know what I'm saying? They they forever, you know, it's, it's very, very, you know, like 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 we do if we was at like Chick Ricks back in the day, right? Like it was very upscale, you know, women came in dressed to impress, brothers came in suited and booted, you know, things of this nature. Same thing with Speed Garage, right? Um, so to me, I fit right in, you know what I'm saying? I fit right in. So uh, I didn't ever have to come suited to booted because they knew Tyree Cooper was, right? So I was really, really respected in that regard. So I kind of stuck with that uh, for a little while in the 90s. And then uh, I don't give y'all a nice little journey. Uh, uh, I, I kind of did that. There, brother, take us there. Uh, then I, then I kind of went to, uh, I kind of figured I, I need to, I, I wanted to move to Europe, right? And so I kind of, um, I kind of uh, figured out, you know, by me going to different countries and everything, you know, me loving Amsterdam, without a doubt, I'm a pothead to my, you know. Uh, so, uh, but I, uh, but I figured. What year was this? This was around 19, 1996. Okay. So I'm I'm messing around 1997 maybe. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm witnessing some of the <clears throat> biggest raves that you can imagine. I mean, when I say rave, dog. I mean. Gosh. How many people? A hundred, twenty, ninety, wow. thousand. Uh, big, big, big circus tents. I mean, it looks like a circus. Some of these raves that I've uh, played at and and and, and witnessed in, in in the UK and in uh, and in Germany, right? So. Um, so you know, around nineteen nineties, around nineteen ninety six, ninety seven, I yeah. started figuring out I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to live in Europe, but I had to figure out which which country I want to get. You know, I want to I want to live in. So I figured Holland was a bit too small. Although I do love Holland again, I I can't stress that enough. I, <laughs> but, I mean, but you know, but it, it, but, 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 but but you know, uh, and that that brings me to another subject. When you when you live in Europe. There's a different kind of history that you learn in Europe than you learn in America. So I, I do love Holland as the country because the people, the Dutch people are are nice. Shout out to the Dutch people, man. I mean, like, yo, they they love them some black people. It's just I understand why. You know what I'm saying? No, no, <laughs> I, just, I, I understand why. 
So, uh, you I, know. I want to touch upon a um, comment that was made. I think Jesse Saunders mentioned it, that a lot of people had to leave Chicago to find the real money, right? And, and so you not only left Chicago to go to Detroit for a moment, but then you went to Europe and you said that things had gotten a little um, odd because maybe you didn't, um, the, there weren't the collaborators that you thought there should be here in Chicago. Is that a fair statement? That's a very, very good assessment of what I just said. Okay. And yeah. so you found greater levels of collaboration I, everywhere I, else you went. <clears throat> Not necessarily collaboration. I found, uh, I, I kind of found myself. Okay. You know what I mean? All right. I kind of, I kind of, I kind of, like when, 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 when you, when you, when you, when you remove yourself from your, your base and move somewhere else, you, you can only rely on yourself. It's, 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 it's a it's survival or or not basically right so you kind of mature within that right so that's kind of how i did it i, I kind of i kind of grew up I, like i said i still knew i had to take care of my daughter so i made arrangements for that um and so around around 1999 i was like man i right, screw you guys i'm going to europe i was on some cartman kind of ish you know what i'm saying <laughs> i was like you know i'm out you know and uh and it was cool, you know, kind of watching the Millennium come in and being in Europe and this kind of thing. So, um, I, um, I, I, I recorded uh, and became friends with the producer of the Scorpions uh, from back in the day. I recorded an entire album. It, I, I, it was cool. It was a, it was a great experience because um, I got a chance to hear what. Uh, how the Germans produce, right? They're very um, technical in, in, in the result because it, it, it's not so like they don't have rhythmic march, like da da da. Now they just very, very meticulous in their work, you know? And and it's, and it's, and it's and for me, it was like, it was a good thing. So, not to say I was lazy or some stereotypical black man, it was just I wanted to figure out how to really get down. So, I, I learned, and I sat back and learned and you know, did what I did. <clears throat> um, and so again, I, I switched music. So I got into broken beat, right? Um, yet another uh, another musical genre that's that's really dope. So I, I started hanging out with a uh, uh, with, with a good friend of mine named uh, Matt Flores. Peace to Matt Flores. Shout out to Matt Flores. Uh, I started hanging out with him, and he was doing stuff like kind of broken beatish. You know, that's how I got into. Uh, for a hero, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the Wagami brothers, you know, uh, you know, these kind of, these kind of groups and stuff. Right. So, uh, I started exploring just different, different music, but still making, making music, but doing more vocal tracks, uh, than anything, because, uh, being that I am one of the pioneers of hip house, uh, the Europeans for some odd reason, uh, they, the time had passed so much they had no idea what hip house was. I put it to you like that, right? Okay. So uh by them not knowing and me trying to explain it, that's just too much talking. Just pay me and this we could just do this. Just just come on, just do this. So uh with within that uh, I had a I had a I had a friend um shout out to Sebastian Creed. We did a record called uh uh we, we did a couple records like about two thousand one we did a record called uh and for me, this is crazy. Say your prayers, right? And I was talking about I wanted a uh, Mercedes Benz and things of this nature. So uh, the record was kind of a, a minimal hit, meaning you know, defected picked it up on a compilation. Um, uh, what's this other label? Uh, a few labels in, in the UK picked up on it, so it was kind of cool. Then we did this other record like around two thousand four called uh, Groove Y'all Tonight. This record was. Was was pretty big because um, I don't know how much I don't know how much uh, had input into it, but they they created a, a one of the first DJ games, like like you, like you had to create a creative records and you picked your record, put it on the turntable, press start, and you get the record and pitch. Once you have it in pitch, then you can bring the crossfader over. 
and you get points for uh for having a record and pitch right because you can go from any genre chill uh chill house deep house so forth and so on right so uh that record was um was featured in that game so to me that was that was pretty big it was on defective compilations um um you know uh two but two years uh two years prior to that uh i did a i did a mix i did a mix cd for uh for a hustler <laughs> hustler magazine that yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I did a, I did a mixed compilation for Hustler magazine. This radio station I was spinning on in in, uh, in Berlin, they uh they had this concept to uh to uh do a mixed compilation for Hustler and with and with with the tour of course. Uh, shout out to my man uh, Highness. Uh, so what happened? So they they put together. I put together the compilation. We flew to Miami. Um, and they, they we did a photo shoot with this uh so allegedly uh russian porno star um from this guy in miami I, I don't know if she was or not uh we did a party at the um at the blue marlin was was bananas it was like it was you couldn't get in that place you couldn't get in that place the strippers and everything this place was wild so we did a tour for that in in germany um Matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, uh, I don't know about any other DJ in the world. I probably could be the first DJ to spin in a whore uh, in a uh, brothel. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hey. um, I'm uh, sure there must be others. <laughs> uh, Not uh, talking about it so much, though. Maybe uh, it was for me. It was a blast because I am, you know, I don't, I don't get down. I don't. I'm not, you know, I don't have to do that. To, you know, you know. So. Okay. Uh, but it was interesting because, you know, I could sit and talk to the young lady and, you know, see how that game works. You know, like, yo, you might need a DJ on some of your, you know, excursions. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, I'm, you know, I'm just down to be your mom, you know, your DJ. I ain't trying to get no coops. I'm just like, yo, I'm just trying to make some money. You get paid, I get paid. That's just how I'm looking at it, right? Right. I'll be. Um, man, only <clears throat> at this point. Uh, uh, so, um, I did. I did that. Um, I did a record that was uh, used used to. Uh, <laughs> it was a compilation used for uh, for a for uh, a Russian cosmonaut. They was playing this music in space. It was a compilation for for the cosmos or something to that effect. I done stuff like that. Uh, Jamiroquai type. Ish. Yeah, no, but it was a compil it was a compilation for for uh this Russian uh aerospace program that was supposed to be going up in space and they wanted some uh some house music or some dance music. I don't know, you know, whatever whatever it was. I, I just did a uh I did a, a actual production for it. Um so that I did stuff like that. Um so, you know, just like I say, just to, just in between the times, just just doing stuff. I I, uh, I don't know, just doing Doing it right, 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 right. Being, right, right. being uh, epic, dude. Well, okay. Well, uh, well, then, then I kind of figured it out, right? Like, right. I'm like, hold on. I'm like, I'm like, hold on. If I'm only getting paid X amount of dollars to DJ at a party, won't I just do like I used to do back in the day and just start throwing my own parties? Ah. I'm like, hmm. I tell you, that's a plan. So I start I start throwing my own parties. I, I hooked up with a, uh, this young cat, uh, Bobby Star. Shout out to my man Bobby Star. We made a little corporation, <clears throat> a little collaboration. Sorry, a little collaboration. Uh, we we called uh, we called it Jack the Box. Uh, <laughs> Where was the base? Where were you throwing? Was, the was based was based in Berlin. But before that, I I did some I did a party. Now this is funny. You want to hear a funny story? I did a party and I used to have a residency in Hamburg and the night was called the power plant revisited. Right. Okay. And uh, my idea, my concept was, you know, to play some older type of, you know, introduce to this at this time, this, this is about 2005, 2006, 2007. Cause this is when I was at this residency. So uh, it was called um, the power plant revisited. So like, you know, the first year was fine. Everything was cool. And then the um the owner 
just out the blue called me when I was in Berlin because I lived in Berlin, but the party was in Hamburg, which is like an hour and a half away. Okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, I would be on the bus like every Thursday, you know, going to Hamburg because it's only an hour and a half away, right? Or, yeah, I'm sorry, on the train, on the, uh, on the, uh, the, uh, I'm the saying, yes, thank you, because I was about to say it in German. Uh, 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 so, uh, I would do Free that. Every Deutsch? Yeah, Cloud, Baron. Can you do a sparkle? Can you do it? Can you do it? Finish? Okay, it's a guy. It's a guy. Anyway, um, uh, 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 so I would do that, like, you know, at once a month. So so he called me out the blue while I'm in Berlin. He's like, hey, man, I got this uh, weird email saying we can't use the name Power Plant Revisited. I'm like, man, get out of here, dude. That's why you don't send you no email like that, man. He said, we can't use the name Power Plant. I'm like, man, hey, man, look, we're in Europe, dude. There's no, they have no, they have no, they, they you know what I'm saying? They can't, they, the they can't be. property laws don't apply. Right, 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 right. They ain't got no, they, they don't have, uh, again, I was about to say, they don't have a, a corporation. Um, well, in Germany, they don't have an AG. I can, they don't have an AG, right? Uh, they don't have a, a trademark uh, or. Exactly. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, man, we can use that. They want to say, nah, man, they, they said this, they said something like whatever. I'm like, go ahead and get out of here. So they sent another email and, and like I read this one. It's like if you if you use this name, we're gonna sue you and then Tyree, we're gonna uh like ruin your career or something to that effect. I'm like, oh y'all gotta be joking, man. I was like, go ahead on with that, man. Go ahead on. So I, I changed it. It's all good, it's all good. So I, I changed it. Um um the night still went it, it, the night was pretty it was pretty cool. I booked um because it was like the first time I was doing my own little parties, right? So I booked uh I booked Daryl Pandy. I booked um, Sundance. I booked um, Fast Eddie. I booked um, Gene Ferris, and uh, and some and some cats from um, some cats from Holland, some cats from the UK. So you know, I was kind of getting used to this whole how do how do you get down because they wouldn't let me in the reindeer games even in Germany. But you know, I bow got my way. Like I said, I'm from the South Side. South Side. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm from the South Side. So, you know, I kind of bow got my way in and stuff to see how this game was going. So, two years into the club, it it, 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 it wasn't good for either one of us. So, I'm like, all right, it's cool. Shout out to the China Club uh, in Hamburg. There's no more. Um, shout out to them because they kind of uh, they kind of gave me my shot because I met the guy on a party in the South of France in Nice on a big boat. So uh, that's kind of how we met. Um, um, yeah, I forgot to mention that part. Uh, uh, well, well, before time is really getting away from us because you're yeah. taking us on this journey from 87 to the 90s to the early 2000s. But I want to go back and talk oh. a little bit about Acid House and, okay. and what was happening there how it evolved, what what your role was. And again, I asked the question, where what what is going on with Acid House in 2020? Uh okay, real we, quick. We acid. <laughs> right. Okay, now. okay, 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 real quick. It Vidi Vidi Vici it came and saw it came and conquered and went. It came and saw and conquered and left, it came and saw it scanned again. Acid House is one of those genres that is never gonna go away. And um and the and the very record that you plant acid over is very 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 funny because I titled it asshole because I hated it, you know. <laughs> so I wanted it to be over, you know what I'm saying? I wanted it to be over. So okay, yeah, because because at the, but at the time at the time it was so many acid records coming out. Acid was pouring out your ears and out your just just it was just. It was, <sighs> You know, it was just acid everywhere, and um, and just being in Chicago, um, you know, you you get over you get overloaded. So, um, again, when DJ International asked me to make a um, a acid record, um, I had been making acid records for different labels prior to that. But by the time they had asked me, (laughs) I said like that. By the time they had asked me, uh, yeah, I said, you know what. I'm gonna make something that they never gonna play. I'm gonna make something that they not gonna play. I know they're not gonna play. I'm just gonna go ahead and take this little check and just you know pay my rent 
and eat me some french fries because that's pretty much what's left after getting a check from from the record label back in the day right so uh, uh pete black was in the studio um joe smooth was in the studio so i said pete you know what man let's make some jazz let's put some let's, you, you, can you can you can you play some jazz he said yeah I'm like, can you put some jazz, like, piano over this, man? He said, hold on, hold on. I was like, all right, bet. So I went outside and blew me one around real quick, came in so I could get the vibe <laughs> on, the, on the board and stuff. And uh, he, he, he had a uh, he had a um, Miller, Miller, Miller Genuine Draft, right? So he drank it. So I'm, I'll make the story quick. So he drank it real quick, boom, boom, boom. He laid it out. Dun, 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 dun. Boom. I'm like, yes, that's it. They're not going to play it. I know they're not going to play it. Took a set home. Uh, me and Hugo was Hugo H. Shout out to Hugo H. We were wow, y'all went there. Uh, 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 shout out to Hugo H. We was roommates at the time. Took the cassette home, the demo cassette. I was like, "Hey man, check this out." He flipped his wig. I'm like, "Dude, what is you talking about?" He said, "Man, Tyree, whatever you do, man, don't lose it, man. Don't lose, it, man. Let me make a copy." I'm like, "Dude, I have it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it." So, um, oh, y'all really went there. Uh, uh, uh. So after a while, um, I went home. I went to a party at the Hummingbird, lost my back cassettes, had to go back in the studio, do the remix, and left the record alone, basically. Hugo did not speak speak for like about a whole few weeks. And it's kind of rough when you roommates and nobody roommate ain't talking to you and stuff. So uh, <laughs> uh, so after a while, I, after a while, I thought acid was kind of over, right? I was like, okay, because okay. hip house was starting to come in and uh, acid that went, to Europe, and I and I really didn't know how big it was in Europe until I actually went. So uh, I thought it was dead. So I, I, I ran into Derek May at um, Gramophone, used to be on Clark. He said, hey, man, everybody's playing your record, man. Everybody's playing your record. I'm like, dude, what record are you talking about? Man, this uh, smooth piano record, man, you got. It's, it's, man, everybody's playing. I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? So he told my ass it over, right? So. Like I said, when I first when I when it was my time to go to Europe in 1988, man, not only hip house was big, acid was humongous. Acid house was humongous in Europe. I had no idea how big that that genre was because for us in Chicago, right? Um, by the time Ron Hardy played it, by the time by the time the street DJs and Ron Hardy played it. Now it's going to the radio. So now you got, it's that on a commercial level, but just in Chicago, right? And kind of when these, those sample, little sample tracks that was coming out back in around 80, late 87, 88, like your Todd Terry's, uh, you know, Royal House kind of tracks and, yeah. uh, your, you know, things of these nature, right? So when these tracks was coming out, it was kind of, acid was still kind of booming, but not really here. Man, you, you, you went to Europe in 88, and you couldn't go nowhere without hearing acid something. Every everything was acidic. So uh, and then to this day, acid house is still bumping. Um, you, you know, you got um, uh, a lot of groups that 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 pop success making acid house. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Man. Yeah. So that is so true. That is so true. You know what? We we went right into sort of your real life DJ career, mm -hmm. and I, we always like to kind of start a little bit with the base. And you're, you're talking about so your base in Chicago. Talk to me a little bit, just a good quick synopsis of where you grew up, community, what high grammar school, high school you went to. Oh no! Give me those basic things, and then talk to me about how you ended up doing a few things with folks at NUR. What what age range was that? Oh. Okay, uh, okay, real quick. Um, um, uh, I'm from. I, I I claim both coasts, uh, west side and south side. I grew up on the on the south on the west side for a little while. I went to um, I went to uh, Mason Primary, Delano Elementary, Gregory Elementary on the west side, and then uh, my, my mom did that. You know, she met a George Jefferson. She moved on up on the west side. <laughs> Um, and we moved to like a um, like a two story two flat uh, crib on uh, 59th and Emerald, and um, uh, I went to uh, uh, Bill Grammar School. 
<laughs> I went to Bill Grammar School. Uh, 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 one of my friends I graduated, two of my friends I graduated with from grammar school at that time was uh, uh, Ken Bennett, like the secretary, what is it? He was Rahm Emanuel's like, Dude. Oh, Chance the Rapper's father. Chance the Rapper. That was my that was my best friend from grammar school to uh, sophomore year high school. Um, I went to school with them. So I graduated from Bill. Uh, went to Simeon. Hated it. Uh, 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 went to Simeon only because I wanted to play basketball. I thought I was good enough to play basketball. Totally not. <laughs> not at that time. Uh, uh, but not at that time. I did get good, though. That's no joke. I did. Ask Chauncey. He in the room. Ask Chauncey. Chauncey. Uh, 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 played. Uh, so, so like, after my freshman, sophomore year, after my freshman, sophomore year, I transferred uh, to uh, Harper High School. But, but during those summers, I played ball with Hyde Park. I played ball with I played AAU ball down at UIC, uh, uh, University of Illinois at Chicago. I played AAU ball down there. Uh, I played park ball. I played against Jerry Childs. I played against uh, Jerome Childs. Shout out to Jerome Childs. I, I, if you got a name, call him Jerry. Uh, Jerome Childs, Tommy Van, Tony McCoy, uh, Ivan Young. You know, uh, shout out to my brother Nate Brooks Jr. because we was uh, in basketball camp together and stuff. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, 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 so real quick, uh, so I, I thought I was good enough to you know play. So I played at, at Harper High School. Shout out to Harper High School. Uh, that's my alma mater. Um, I played one year there, and then I just kind of I don't know basketball for some reason was. I don't know. I, I quit and then played AAU ball for uh, for the rest of the year. So um, when it came down to camp, I had a um, an offer to go to uh, either Trinity College in Deerfield or the University of Wisconsin Stout in uh, Menominee, Wisconsin. So I went up there. I went up to Menominee because I figured, hey, I'm black. It's a white school. My chances are starting. I got a good. You know, I'm, I got good odds. I got game. You know, I'm from you know I'm from the gritty street, the gritty streets of Chicago. So uh, that lasted about a good hour and a half, somewhere <laughs> up in there. Um, uh, I came home, um, I went to Kennedy King, found out uh, Hugo H was already at Kennedy King, so I had somebody to talk to. Uh, Pink yeah. House was there. Uh, man, Ali was out there. Say, Pink House, that's my brother. Oh, what a dual threat. Uh, Pink House was there. So uh, I played, I was playing basketball for, uh, I was about to play basketball. Actually, I was on the team, actually. Uh, play basketball for Kennedy King College. So um, up until that point, I had uh, uh, dreams of making it to the NBA because now I made it to college, right? I did all this on the grind. Who knew? To, to, Who I was talking this? Uh, yeah, you, you, Tracy Dildy. I played against King and Effort Winners. I played against uh, uh, Robeson, Hirsch, Hyde Park. Uh, oh, man, I played against so many people back in the day. Uh, uh, Lynn Bloom, uh, uh, Raphael Cook, oh man, some voicey winners, my man, Lil, what's my, uh, whew, anyway. Uh, which is anyway. ironic because you left Simeon, which was a basketball powerhouse, and you went to Harvard. And look, just real quick, just real quick, back in the day, man, Simeon had a team walking the halls within a team, walking the halls, football, mm -hmm. basketball, and or baseball. Simeon just, if, if you, if you, if if you can if you can crack back in the day Hamburg, but see, you know, basketball was very political. Okay, yeah, certainly. Uh, uh, and if they didn't kind of recruit you from grammar school, so to speak, and they didn't breed you, so they, you know, you, you had to be extraordinary. Yeah. And so I worked on my game. I worked on it and worked on it, and worked on it. Just like I did when I was making records. But anyway, uh, so anyway, so uh, uh, yeah, Simeon, I just left Simeon. I, said I wanted to play basketball. So I've kind of yeah. followed my friend Joe Love. Shout out to my friend Joe Love. His man, his man George Floyd. You know how afraid I was when I heard that that guy got shot. <laughs> I thought my friend George Floyd. Anyway, uh, 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 peace, Black Terry. Uh, hey, anyway, Black so, Terry. Uh, so, so I, I said, you know what? I'm playing with Kennedy King, so I'm on my way. And hanging around Hugo, Pink House, 
and WKKC. Shout out to Walter Get Down Brown. Uh, uh, I'm hanging around them, and I'm like, you know what, man? This this DJ thing might be my little lit. You know, I'm I'm, I'm kind of feeling this. So I told I told the coach at Kendy King, peace King, peace King, Corky, Corky. Uh, uh, I, I told the coach at Kendy King, like, yo, you know what? Here. I'm not playing basketball. I'm not playing basketball no more. And he was like, son, you're throwing your life away. What are you talking about? Uh, what do you need? You know, you need this, that, and the third. I'm like, man, that's just sound like an NCAA violation already. So <laughs> uh, I'm like, yo, so the little, uh, the little assistant coach, bless him. Uh, he told me, he looked at me, he's like, <coughs> he looked at me, he's like, yeah, you ain't going to be nothing. Hanging around them DJs up in the radio, throwing your life away. I looked at that dude. Was like, first of all, man, you know, give me three feet, dude, because you know what I'm saying. Oh, you know, your joints is a bit it's pretty cold. Tainted. Yeah, yeah, you know, your joints is a bit tainted and shit, right? <laughs> so I, I, I looked at him. I was like, I right, bet you know, I took that as food for fighters. So I hung around the radio stations uh, and um, got the bug for hanging around KKC, but. They didn't invite me to the reindeer games because they didn't think I was good. So being the basketball player that I was, and I told you prior in conversation that I played for so many schools because I was trying to figure out where I wanted to be, who I wanted to be, who I wanted to see me. So I, I again, I I had more offers than the ones I mentioned, but I'm just cutting the story down short. Because I had an offer from Iowa, I had an offer from DePaul, I, I had a uh, 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 wow. A notice, a notice from Marquette, uh, 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 Panhandle State, uh, Southwest Missouri, um, you know, you know these D three schools and stuff like that. But I wanted to play ball. I wanted to be in the pros. So I figured out that game. So I applied that game to the DJ world. So I'm like, okay, they won't put me on KKC. I did the old, you know, do 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 do. Yo, my name is Tyree Cooper, and uh. Y'all have guest DJs on, on your radio station? I guess I guess uh uh Prince Easy D like this mother got to be crazy. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Come on down, man. Come on down. So I came down, I showed him that I could spin, you know, I told him the music that I was spinning. And that was it. That's how I got on NUR. And didn't really realize that it shared the frequency with KKC yes, until sir. you get past the McCormick place. Oh exactly. yeah. That's <laughs> McCormick Place on Lakeshore Drive, and then you know you on know, a clear like, night because it's uh, cloudy. You got to go past Monroe. <laughs> yeah, you got to go past. There you go. You got to go past Monroe. You, you already know. You already know. You've been there, done that. So, okay. um, so and I used to I used to carry my records. I mean, like you know these DJs today, man. I I, I used to carry a crate of records from sixty third and Ashland to Evanston every weekend. Oh my goodness! Every weekend, every so who weekend. were the DJs? DJ Easy Lee, which is Lee DJ, Cross. Who else was there? Yeah, uh, Larry Lair, uh, and uh, and and Sweet D, or Sweet Sweet MD. T Shabley, did you do you ever do any work with T Shabley? Tim yeah, Harris, he, Mendel. Yeah, T uh, yeah, uh, Shabley, he was there, but he was on a different night, if I'm not mistaken. I don't mm -hmm. think he was, I think I think T Shop Lee had his own night because he was so yeah, he um, did. Oh, this boy was so dope. That's another legend that don't get mentioned. This boy was so oh smooth blends, just just silky smooth T Shop and his little drop T Shop Lee. Come on now, come on now. T Shop Lee was ice cold, ice cold. Um, well, yeah, that's how I got hooked up with uh with NUI. Just you know, that's how I got hooked up with any record label. Oh, so, I can't get I can't get a free record. You made the call. That's how, that's how I met Jesse Saunders. <laughs> Tell us that story. Give us that story. <laughs> oh man, my big brother. I love my big brother. I love my big brother. Uh anyway, um what had happened was <laughs> what had happened was um um I um uh we was at KKC and uh man Hugo was playing around. It was like, you know, he was Farley and I was Jesse. You know, it was like, yeah, I'm playing my new record. I'm, hi, I'm Jesse Saunders. And you're listening to my new record, uh, on and on, blah, 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 whatever, you know what I'm saying? I guess Jesse was in the car, was like, 
these got to be the two craziest Negroes I have ever. They on the radio pretending to be me, so he walked up to KKC. <laughs> like, yo, which one of y'all is me? I'm like, well, who is you? I'm Jesse Sanders. Uh oh. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, it didn't stop there. So, like, yo, dog, listen, hey, man, um, dig it. Can I get some records? You know what I'm saying? Can the, can the brother get some records? You know, you know, that's how I used to get gym shoes when I played ball. Hey, coach, these shoes a bit small, man. Can I, you know, can I get a pair of Nike? Come back to the crib with some fresh Nikes. Uh, you know, you know, they ain't got this. So I got, I got records too, right? Uh, so I asked Jesse, he's like, yeah, man, just come by the crib. Now, and again, uh, again, I appreciate, I appreciate Jesse because he did not have to let me come by his crib and see anything. The brother didn't know me from Adam. He just like, he just like, yo, I must, I must have had a little uh, on his face because he's like, yo, just come by the crib and I get you something, right? So I came by the crib and um, uh, I looked and I saw this equipment. I was like, all right. That's it. I know what I'm doing now. Cause he got all these equipments. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm low key not trying to touch something. Cause when he go get the record in the little closet, I'm, I'm telling not Jesse. I don't care. I'm telling it now because you couldn't see me. I'm on the keyboard like, shit, drum machine tapping, <laughs> tapping, shit. I'm like, I want to rub this on, you know, get some magic on me. So, um, but he again, he allowed me and with Wayne to shout out to Wayne Williams. They uh, they allowed me to be around it or expose me to it. Although, uh, yeah, I, I told a, oh, I told a big ass lie, uh, lied to get to it, but um, you know, he was like very instrumental. Matter of fact, Vince Lawrence is the one that kind of read my DJ International contract for me. So you know, that's how deep I go with Jesse's gang. Yeah, um, so that's that's my big brother forever. So the the night is getting away from us, and we really have enjoyed the the journey that we've right. been on with you. But one of the questions that um, I can't let the night go without asking is understanding how you got the name Super Duper Producer. Oh, that's easy. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, it's from the rhyme. Um, if you, if you, okay. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, from, uh, from, uh, okay. I think Cool Rock, I think Cool Rock heard it from uh, Milk and Gears. The super duper producer, Milk and Gears, right? From yeah. audio too, right? I'm I'm only taking I'm only taking a stab at that because you know, hey, you know, creative, creative. You know, okay. You know, hey. So he he took it and he stressed it out, and so when he said it, like when like when he said it, Tyree Cooper, the producer, awesome, super duper trooper. He make the bass and boys banging while the samples on there changing. Everything is on smooth and legit. This record hits like a Levi fit. So turn it up loud and rock the place and don't forget to turn it through. When he said that, I was like, wow, I got something to scratch. Jiggy, jiggy, Tyree Cooper, the producer. I said, I can do that. Tyree Cooper, the producer. I can be like Farley. Tyree Cooper, the producer. I can make a track. Tyree. That's all I kept thinking in my head. Didn't think it was a hot line. I just thought I could sample it myself. <clears throat> I could sample it myself and uh, make a nice little track out of it, like Steve Silk Hurley. That was my only thought. By the time that record came out to this day, to this day, when people see me young and old, when they come across house music, they say, Super producer, awesome, super duper trooper. Any variations of that from turn to bass and let the music take control, depending on which record they like the best. That that one line, I'm like, wow. After for a little while, you know, you get kind of tired of because you ain't making no money. So I'm like, don't say that no more. Leave me alone. Move. You know. Uh, uh, but uh, so we kind of going. Yeah, go ahead. We we absolutely have enjoyed this as uh, Charles Gordon has shared. Shannon Sias tuned in. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to shout out to Skip. Peace, Skip. It's one of my other brothers. Peace, Skip. Shout out, we, shout out. We're gonna obviously have to have you back on the show uh, because the journey we've only captured one fourth of it. It feels like. So but, I tell you, I man, I tell you, all the thing that happened to Tyree Cooper, you know, it's a <laughs> lot of things that happened to Tyree Cooper along the way. See, and, and so. We hope that you would return. Yes, uh, for sure. Episode of the Vintage House Show. 
Yes, I, I enjoyed it. Trust me, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Thank y'all. Uh, I appreciated the shout out last week. You know what I'm saying? I love that. I love the little going back down memory lane with uh, uh, Aisha Mays and stuff because I don't know if it's true. Is I don't know if she's related to Ben Mays. He was another. She, she is. That's that's her brother. That's a good brother. That's a good yes, brother. He is a good. He's a good. Yeah, he's another. He's another brother that was. Uh, uh, he, he, that kind of opened my eyes to like some very deep and uh, it's kind of meaningful house and everything. He was. That's a good brother. But I, I wanted to talk to him because uh, at the time I don't know how he is today. He 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 was messing with karate. Well, martial arts at this time, and um, <clears throat> as one of the things I did in Europe as well. But that's for another conversation at another time because we're running out of time right now. The, and, Europe, uh, the whole Europe flow. We, we need to talk <laughs> about the beginning to the end of you being in Europe. And uh, where are you right now? I'm in Las Vegas. I'm in Las okay, Vegas. Just yeah. checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, I want to hear that entire journey. So there needs absolutely needs to be a round two. Yeah. Yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Cause me had, a, me, had a, me had a big time in Europe. Just put it like this: I matured so much in Europe. I had, I feel like I had a second life mm. in Europe because it was so many things that the places I've been to Jerusalem. I seen the Wailing Wall. I, I've been to Siberia. I've been, I've been to, to, to Shanghai. I'm a, you know, I, I love me some martial arts. You know what I'm saying? So I, I've been to Shang, I've been to New Zealand, I've been to Bundy Beach, New Zealand. I've seen a koala bear in the tree. And so I've seen cockatoos like pigeons on the, on the telephone line. You know what I mean? Bats that just fly freely in, in, in Tel Aviv. You know what I'm saying? I, I've seen some. Global. Been, Global. Man, Global. Man, you got to have all yeah. that. Yeah. Turkey, which was so, funny. Oh, so we're going to reach out to you and get our part two, three, and four schedule. Word, 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 word. Tyree's an encyclopedia of what people say sometimes, depending on the question. You know, I can I can dig deep into it. But uh generally, um I I, I really I really enjoyed the opportunity for y'all having me here it was we, we enjoyed we having need, you, Tyree. We need, we need more of that. We need more no of that. no doubt. Please tell your friends and family to tune in to the Vintage House show every word. Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Central here on the Vintage House page on YouTube, the djchannel.com, and anywhere your podcast can be found. Word. This has been another episode with Tyree Cooper. Word, word, word. Peace, 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 peace. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, very much. Thank you, very you don't much. have a philosophical question today? I mean, he his whole Wait. interview was philosophical. <laughs> oh, word, oh, word. You can you can drop the drop the Philly on me. Go ahead and drop that Philly knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Drop the Philly knowledge. You know what I'm saying? You took me off my philosophical game tonight. I <laughs> okay. Wait, okay, okay, okay. Um, word, word, I'm gonna word. get back at you. Don't you worry. <laughs> Yeah, because economics, I, I like the economics part of it, and uh, like this book, Freakonomics, which is a great, interesting book. I mean, different books like uh, 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 When She Was Bad, How Women, Women Behavior, these kind of, you know, all these kind of things I read in Europe, learning about, again, history. In, in Europe, I learned a lot by being in Europe that I did not learn while I was being in America. So we'll, we'll want to hear more about by that. By design, by design. Yes, it is by design, and uh, America is well. America. Showing its true colors now, for sure. Ooh, say that again, yeah. Queen, say that again. Sin. <laughs> Talking about so different for, egg now, you know. For Lauren Lowry, your man, and Mega, we miss you, Lori Branch. We yes, yeah. Lori. Yes, Lori. Uh, real quick, I used to have a crush on Lori when I was younger. My first yeah, time everyone DJ. had a crush on Lori. That's what that's oh, no, she, wasn't, she, she wasn't the only one. Celeste, Bird. Uh -huh. Oh man, I was like, how can they do that and look so good at the same time? <laughs> uh, and trust me, I was never gonna talk to none of them because I ain't had no heart like that. I could dog anybody in the basketball court, but to try to talk to a beautiful woman, and I was like, uh, I, I was too too much of a clown, too much joking and stuff. So that was just. <laughs> Everyone tuned in tonight. We thank you. Word, thank word, you. Word. Thank, thank you, Tyree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Lauren, who's our guest next Wednesday? Is this Lori's uh Lori's night? She actually gave us the calendar. And of course, I don't remember right now, but she's but got some hot guests coming up. 
And it's going to be fantastic. Tune into her tomorrow somewhere. She's talking about a, a documentary that she uh, wow. produced. So uh, uh, that highlights the South Side of Chicago and her one of her family's churches. So she is, uh, of course, a dynamic person and doing several thousand things. So we mm. look forward to seeing her tomorrow and then next week with her special guests. Excellent. Word. Word. Tyree, be yes. well. Yes, Kev. Yes, yes, yes Kev. Vegas, my man. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Y'all be safe up in Chicago. You thank know, you. Peace, peace, peace. All right. We're going to go out with All right. Tyree Cooper. Deuces, deuces, deuces. Let the music take control. Go on, then. Go on, then. Why am I the only one dancing? Come on. <laughs> That's what the show is about, a little dancing. <laughs> Dang, block me out. They got half, they got half me too, so don't trip. Depending on how I look, they got you all out, but it's all good. <laughs> Let the music take control for the one who's got soul. Tyree Cooper's coming back at you natural. It's not fiction, it's actual. This music definitely happening to make the party people keep dancing. But this is something on a different world. Hey, let the music take control. Let the music take control. Shout out to Anthony Thomas. All right, all right. That's oh, your wait. Vocal? Yeah, that's me. Nice. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word. Word. I heard you say it, but I didn't really know. I, I got one record that went platinum. Peace. The next time. Start with that. that.